So welcome along to the next iPhotography podcast. Uh, my name's Stephen. If you've not joined us before, I am one of the tutors here at iPhotography. And if you don't even know what iPhotography is, we're an online training community. We teach people from absolute beginner how to become a really amazing photographer. We've got courses, we've got videos, we've got memberships, we've got loads of different things. And you can find out much more about them and using, uh, there'll be a link in the description so you can actually have a look at our courses and our products and all the little bits and pieces like that. But if you are familiar familiar with us already. Thank you so much for tuning into this next episode and hopefully you're going to really enjoy it because um, we've got one of my favorite photographers on the podcast today. It's an iPhotography member called Audrey Swikert. Um, now Audrey is based in um, Ohio in the USA and she's a really, really creative photographer. She's been with iPhotography for around about three, four years, I think it may have been. Um, and she's really, really diverse in terms of like her portfolio of images. And if you're watching this as a YouTube video, we'll put some of those images actually into the video itself so you can see um, what hopefully we're going to end up talking about um, and obviously if you're just listening to this as a podcast there'll be links in the description so you can actually uh, link to Audrey's um, Instagram accounts I think she's got one there so hopefully we'll get those details off her um, but anyway I'm going to uh, just jump straight into the interview because I've got Audrey on hold here uh, and we're going to chat yeah we're just going to kind of hopefully get a little bit more information about kind of her creative photography her food photography what kind of inspires her uh, and how she's kind of kept going over the past 12 months but i hope you enjoy it thank you so much for listening and on with the show hey audrey how are you i'm fine you okay good oh i like your decoration in your house oh this is my poker room your poker where room we, where we do not pay, play poker so <laughs> we've ever played poker in this room <laughs> oh wow it's amazing so it's like meant to be your games room is it yes there's a bar behind me there's a theater room over here we oh, do use wow. the room, so <laughs> not the poker room <laughs> not the poker room I mean, have you got like all, all like the green table and everything all the felt yes but you i don't have it up now but you can turn it over oh so brilliant I, okay i haven't seen it in years because never <laughs> it, but, <laughs> yeah we have that so what even even like kind of being stuck at home like in lockdown you've never used a poker table no we played oh. go fish on it one time with my little kids so oh bless, <laughs> oh, bless you are you like are you guys able to get out a little bit more now you're not like under oh, yeah. like restrictions yeah. so much now is that kind of no. mostly ended for you no. and our state is actually going to lift all restrictions pretty soon no oh, masks right. or anything so oh. i don't know yeah pretty soon Nice. Change. Where, where is it? Where, what, what state are you in? Sorry. Ohio. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So like mid yeah, Midwest. Up by the lake. Yeah. Up by the lake. So, oh, yeah. brilliant. Oh, lovely. That's great. Well, I mean, well, thank you so much for coming on anyway to, uh, yeah. to the podcast as well. Cause it's, it's something you're a person that I've been wanting to have on for a while. Um, because of your you know your, your kind of creative photography which we'll kind of come on to a little bit later anyway but I have got like a number of questions I wanted to kind of uh, dive through with you because obviously there'll be people that haven't uh, maybe listened to the podcast previously or obviously people that may not be familiar with yourself and your photography um, and yeah. so I thought it was a good opportunity to maybe kind of get a like a little bit of a backstory really from you in terms of like when you first picked up a camera you know what your kind of journey's been like from that point up until now really um it, the well the earliest I can remember having a camera I think I was like 10 and I had one of those Polaroid one steps you oh, know yeah. the big clunky camera where you push the <laughs> button and there's the film comes shooting out of the bottom you know I <laughs> love that camera I thought it was the greatest thing ever and um I took pictures of everything you know my cat my guinea pig you know and all my pictures were up on my wall so that's the first camera I remember having but um then I remember having the Kodak disc camera with, oh, the, wow. that little, with the, with that little weird disc. It was like, uh, the film was like a circle disc thing. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a weird camera, but I had that for a while. I don't remember much about that, but I did have that camera and that was probably in the eighties. I don't know. And then, um, after that, I got my first, uh, my first SLR film camera, but, I didn't know anything about the camera and I didn't know anything about photography. I knew absolutely nothing. I don't know why I even bought that camera because I basically just, I, I lived in auto mode and just 
push the button. I mean, that's really all I did with that camera, but I took probably thousands and thousands of pictures with that camera. And my first three kids were all on that camera. And um, they were here a few weeks ago and we decided to get out all of those pictures that I took. And it was, I, I, I never had them all in one area at the time. And there were just boxes and boxes and thousands of pictures. And so the kids got to go through them and some of them they probably had never seen. And um, some of them probably not for a long time. And uh, it was really fun. And there was a lot of really cool stuff in there, but also a lot of really bad pictures. <laughs> you know, I didn't know anything and the lighting was bad and everything was bad. And there's some that should have just been, you know, gotten rid of. And, but I kept them all. And, you know, back in the day, and I don't know if everybody did this, but I always got doubles when I got my films developed. I don't know why I got doubles. Like maybe I took like the greatest picture ever and I might need a double of it, which never <laughs> happened. <laughs> so you get doubles back and it was just all bad pictures. But for some reason, I just never got rid of those either. So I should just take all those and put them in a box. I just can't seem to like throw them away, even though they're just really bad. And I have like deer pictures from when we moved here. I didn't have deer in my yard before. So when we moved here, every time a deer came in the yard, I was like, oh, we got to take a picture of that. And it wasn't just one picture, it was like 10 pictures. So I've got zillions of deer pictures that just need to go because they're all bad. But it was fun. And um, so we got to go look at all those. But then uh, I don't know when the digital age came around and digital cameras started coming out. But I just remember saying, no, I'm not doing that because I said, uh -uh, I am not doing digital. I'm sticking with my film. And for some reason, I just thought that digital seemed like it was cheating or it was gonna be too easy. And I had no idea what I was talking about because I mean, I had you know, a camera that I didn't know how to use already in my film camera and I just hit a button. So there's nothing easier than that. So I'm not sure why I thought, you know, that you know, digital was going to be so too easy and cheating, whatever. But I finally <laughs> said, okay, fine. And I, and I went to digital and, uh, and uh, my fourth child was all digital. So uh, that was probably around 2004 or something, something like that. But I think I've had probably three digital cameras since then. And uh, right now I'm, I shoot with the D7200 uh, Nikon. Yep. And it does what I want it to do. It's not like the latest greatest, but uh, it does everything I need it to do. And I still look at the $3,000 cameras and I think, yeah, that's what I want. I want that, you know? No, I don't. I don't need that. I want that. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Fun. You're so right to say there, there is a difference between the needs and the ones. And do you yes. still have like your your old, like um, your old 35 mil cameras? Do you still kind of keep the, the, the old film cameras? Um, the film, the old film camera, I don't know what happened to that. I, it, that, I don't know. I don't know what happened to any of those cameras, actually, the old ones that I had. Um, but I did just get a new film camera about a year ago. I got a, uh, a Nikon uh, F100 and I'm still learning how to use that. And, um, but I did, I developed my own film. And oh, you do? I developed my own film and then I, I used my DSLR to digitize it with my macro lens, turn it into a raw file, and then I can edit it and stuff like that. So I've been working on that, but it's something that I, I need to work more on and, and learn more. It's, it's an amazing process and the, the satisfaction. Is. I mean, I, I've only done it very, very briefly, but this was going even back to university. Yeah. And it was it was at that kind of precipice when we were moved. Well, we you know, the, the world was moving from uh, from film to digital. So we didn't really kind of linger on it too much because digital was seen as the future. So right. it was like a case of, well, you know, what's the point of uh, looking at film? But it, it's so satisfying to, as you say, to kind of take the image and basically then kind of, um, you know, obviously mix it all together, you know, with all your all your fluids and your washes, et cetera, as well. Right. But 
it's like, it's fantastic that you've kind of you've kind of got that process yourself at home really and it's something as you say you know you can extend your hobby not just from uh taking the photograph but then editing it but in a very hands-on way because right. i think this is what people like you were saying you know people um you know i say mistakenly think that digital is cheating but right. you know a, an image regardless how it's taken even with it's with a film camera can be edited still and manipulated in some way so you can right. always say there is an element of cheating in one respects but right. you know it's it, it's a means right. to an end i say i don't think it's a bad thing and i didn't know anything back then you know i knew nothing about cameras or anything back then so to me digital was like oh that's too easy you know i know different now but <laughs> at the time you know it was different than back then <laughs> do, you, do you find it's made any easier though for for your photography in general is it as it got kind of uh i don't know a little bit quicker in terms of the process or has it helped you understand anything kind of photographically just having a, a digital camera yeah uh, digital it, i mean because everything i'm very impatient very impatient <laughs> So everything I, I like, that's what I like about digital. Everything is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take that picture, you can put it on your computer. It's right now. You know, like back then when I didn't develop my own, but you know, you had to wait for it. You had to send it in and it's like, you know, two weeks later, you finally get them back. And, and that's when you realize, oh, I should have done that. Or I didn't do this right. It's like, now you can learn instantly. You know, you can look at something and say, Oh, that's bad, you know, <laughs> or the, the lighting wasn't right or something wasn't right. And you can go back, you can learn right away, go yeah. back, correct it right now. And that's what I love about digital. I will never just do only film and, you know, no way. No, you've done with fun. that. No, it's fun and I love doing it, but it's not something that I would ever just give up digital for. You know? I, I, it, it, I, I've always seen it as a very good challenge that I'm, I'm totally with you. And, you know, my, my earliest cameras when I was learning were all film. And I've always kind of thought now, even, even whether we did it within iPhotography, but it'd be quite niche to do uh, like a 35 mil challenge, you know, whether it's like a, a week's challenge or a month's challenge or something yeah. like that. But I think it could be very educational to people that maybe haven't grown up with film to understand that you obviously don't have a lot of shots. You've only got maybe like a, a 36 exposure or something shorter yeah. and, and so it makes you concentrate a lot more upon the exposure the composition and, and all that as well so it, i think it's a very good yeah. tool to to teach in a way um but yeah you're right your, your results you do have to wait a little while to know yeah. <laughs> what yeah. you're right and wrong I know. and you know and then and you look at it as every every shot you take is is money i mean really because you can't just make a mistake you mm -hmm. have to really think about okay i gotta make sure i really want to take this picture because you know, you could blow through a whole roll of 36 and not have anything at all, you know? Yeah. So it does make you think. It makes you think a lot. Oh, Massa. I remember my my niece's birthday um, last year. She wanted a camera and I was like so excited. I think this is this is brilliant. So my sister bought the camera and I bought us some film and because it was one of those um, Instax cameras. So it's like like the old Polaroid cameras. Um, yeah. But the little films, um, you know, that they, they print out at the bottom and they're not the same size as like full scale Polaroids. They're maybe yeah. about half or a third of the size, but they were like 20 pounds for a pack. So it, it maybe about twenty five dollars. So it's, it's almost working out as about, you know, one or two pounds you know a couple of dollars per shot and yeah. i'm thinking i really hope you know she makes the most of this but i know she's going to go around and just click 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 <laughs> i was like which is fine but i'm looking at it and going oh my god then you know it's like 20 pounds 25 dollars down the pan i'm thinking <laughs> It's so expensive now. We just need to move her on to instant, in, yeah. instantly move her to digital. But I, I know what you mean. And I understand that's probably why a lot of people, you know, maybe don't touch film so much these days. But if you know what you're doing, it can be very kind of cost effective somewhat. But yeah, I don't, I think I'm with you. I don't think I'd give up my uh, my digital no camera too quickly, really. But um, um, but anyhow, yeah. I wanted to kind of circumnavigate back a little bit to, to, to yourself and, and your photography now, really, because I said the main purpose is why we wanted to have you on the show was because of how creative you are with a camera, whether it is digital or film, but you know, what you put in front of it and how you capture it is something that has been kind of capturing our attention anyway, as, as photography tutors for quite a while. And I mean, we'll, we'll kind of put some images up kind of on screen when, uh, if anyone's watching this as a YouTube video and not the podcast, we'll be able to see some of Audrey's photographs. Um, so you know what we're talking about, but I'm looking at them on my screen here and there is, a huge array it's not just kind of one style and you don't fit into kind of one pot or one type of category you're so willing to try everything out and I think my question is I, I want to know what kind of what keep you know where do you find that inspiration to keep you so motivated to do different things um well 
most of mostly when I, I try to think of something to do, I, I, I try to think of it in my own head first and see if what I can come up with. Sometimes there isn't anything up there. So I have <laughs> to uh, sort of go somewhere else. And a lot of times if I really can't think of something, um, I'll go online and there's all kinds of stuff online to look at and get inspiration from other photographers, whatever. Mm. Um, I do have a folder on my computer that um, I just put all of my ideas in if I think if I see something that I like and that I think it'd be fun to try or anything subject different colors lighting whatever I just put it in there and it's just sort of my inspiration folder oh, um, so I, I do that kind of thing but you know you can look at anything magazines I, I can go to the grocery store and I'm like wow that would be cool you know and I think as photographers we just look at things in a different way and we just look at things differently than normal people do. <laughs> you, you're, you're totally right I I think I was looking at I can't think of what I was looking at the other day I was and I was standing there thinking it's like that would make a really good photograph and I think I said it out loud and I don't know if someone was with me it's like what are you on about it's like you know you you do see things in compositions and thinking what's the best angle or what looks the prettiest and you, you get totally absorbed into what may seem like really mundane things to other people right. that you say um but right. that's just a creative a creative mind isn't it really how, yeah, I how it works so. I guess so not crazy <laughs> it's a fine line but yeah <laughs> ever so slightly different but I mean with what you were saying about you know that you you sound to be kind of inspired by so many different things which is great and it's reflected in your portfolio of images that they are kind of quite varied you know over time a lot of photographers do try to I suppose as they get more professional maybe let's say they do tend to prefer to kind of create a, a style or a specific body right. of work etc but I say you're, you're so varied and you seem to be comfortable with that I mean is that something you're you're quite happy to continue or are you trying to kind of get to a point where you have a certain look or a certain style of, with, with your images well yeah that it's a hard question because I sometimes I feel like I should have a style. I should like, that's a requirement. Like you really should hmm. find a direction. And I just have a hard time with that because I like everything. Yeah. And so I like trying new things and I like doing different things. And, and um, I think, you know, sometimes things just, just pop into my head and I think, okay, I want to try that today. And then another thing, you know, will pop up the next day and, and I can't seem to, to focus on one thing, but um uh, just, you know, like it's kind of going back to the inspiration thing when I, I was looking at, um, when I was just cleaning as it's cleaning up and I picked up, um, my daughter's soccer shoe and it had mud and stuff all over the bottom of it. And I was going to go outside and just, you know, get the mud off of it. And I thought, wait, you know, I could do something with this. So I took it upstairs. Yeah, I have a room that used to be a kid's room and it's all my photography stuff. And so I have uh, all those, you know, the little um, little miniature people, you know, and I had soccer players. So I just turned the shoe upside down and, uh, it, you know, and I put the people on there and it, it, it took me a while to get it all ready and everything, but it turned out to be one of my favorite pictures. And it's not because it's like the most stellar picture ever, but it's, it's because it came from nowhere, you know, yeah. it came from, it just came from really dirt on the bottom of a shoe. And so... <laughs> that you know and and so that's the kind of thing that i do and and i it's not like one type of style one type of of thing and i and i always feel like what if i pick a style and then i don't want to do that anymore you know what i mean it's like i feel like do i have to stick with it i don't yeah. know <laughs> you know but i i look on the gallery and i see um I see, you know, pictures on the gallery and I know who took that picture before I even read the name. And I think that's cool. Maybe that's something I want to do, you yeah. know, but I just don't know which way to go. And I guess if, I suppose if you really, you know, made me pick something, I might pick food photography because I don't know why I love food photography so much and you don't see a lot in the gallery. And I'll tell you why <laughs> it's because I don't like to cook. <laughs> and I don't like to cook. I don't like to bake. I don't like going to the grocery store. I don't like anything that has to do with, with food like that. So why I want to actually take pictures of it. I don't know, but I actually have, uh, I last week started a, a cooking class online because I thought maybe 
you know, it'll inspire me to actually want to cook something more creatively and not just like right now I cook, I can cook, I cook like every day, but I'm cooking like for my family's dinner, you know, and yeah. you know, no one wants a picture of meatloaf, you know, <laughs> you know, nobody wants that. So it's like, I need to think more like inspiration, you know, pretty food, you know, cooking that way and not me love I guess. yeah no I and I understand I, I I like that you know going back a little bit to the, to the start of your answer that your I think your personality and given what you've been saying already that you it's like you you're not kind of patient enough or you know you'd like to kind of get things done there and then and, and jump yeah. to one thing or another my mind's like that and as much as I've I've got kind of a I say like a style of types of images that I like as well I do like to try like different content within it and different types of objects but still if I can try and apply the same type of style to it somewhat but so I totally know where you're coming from in that kind of side as well and I don't think you have to um, kind of pin yourself down either if you're enjoying what you're doing in the way that you're doing it now then you know, I would say can, can continue by all means because it's it's got you to such a good point already. And I was just actually flicking through the gallery at the same time as you were talking because I was looking for that photograph off the shoe because I, I feel oh, like I've seen it. Yeah. It's in there it's somewhere. In there. And I, I'm going to yeah. try and kind of flash it up on screen okay. anyway for anyone that's watching it later on as well, just so they can kind of understand what we're we're talking about. But yeah. but you're you're so right. You know, those shots that literally have appeared from you know just instant inspiration that you've not sat down or planned or researched, etc sometimes feel the most satisfying really because they are just a pure product of your right. creativity really and I and I think as you say you know given you know how strong your portfolio is in terms of how diverse you've been and being able to kind of just adapt yourself to you know I'm looking at some really high speed photography with the, the balloon pops that you've got and then some beautiful kind of um you've been doing a um is it like a 52 week project that you've been working yes. on yes yes I still have to do this one this week. I'm, I'm a little behind. <laughs> what, what, what was the challenge this week for you? Um, this week is religion, I think. So oh. I'm, I'm still working on that one. I've just been busy, but I got to do that one. That's my next one. How have you found such challenge? Because a lot of people do embark these kind of things, maybe at like the start of the year and come, yeah. you know, week four or five, right. it's maybe falling yeah. by the wayside a bit. Yeah. So, you know, you're doing pretty well. We're in, you know, what we're kind of uh, yeah. like into May now and you've kind of kept right. up with it fairly yeah. well. Now, but... Usually I, I quit those kind of things and, and I, <laughs> I'm doing them before and I forget or whatever and then I just give it up. But so far... I have not given it up. So oh, that's really, really good. I, <laughs> so I mean, because yeah, I, I totally. I mean, I've I've spoke with quite a few people on a on podcast recently that the past twelve months or so, um, with everything that's been going on, has been really really hard, and it's been kind of very isolating for some people and quite demotivating that they've not been able to get out as much and, and do a lot yeah. of what they like really. But it doesn't seem to really have stopped you that much that you know your adaptability you've got a lot of uh, indoor photography as well as some outdoor stuff but right. you know kind of maybe now that things are starting to relax a little bit more as you were just saying previously right. in Ohio do you have like any goals that you want to achieve like within the next 12 months say of your photography um well I kind of I I originally a long time ago right when I started learning photography I wanted to do wildlife and I thought wildlife photography would be really cool. But once I started learning, I realized I, I don't have the right lens. I mean, you gotta have a big lens for that. And I just kind of put it on the back burner. And then um, and then I photography came out with their wildlife course. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm taking that, you know? <laughs> so I did, I took the course and it was awesome and I loved it. And so now um, I do have my big lens and I have, I got a Sigma, um, I think it's a 150 to 600 millimeter. It's pretty big and it's a little bit heavy, but it's not horrible. I thought it was gonna be heavier than it is. So um, I did go outside with it when I first when I first got it. And I thought, you know, I need to learn how to use this and, and you know, get used to it because mm -hmm. it is heavy. And we have a lot of birds and stuff in the backyards. So I thought I'm gonna go out and do that. So I took it outside and the birds went away and they never came back. <laughs> so I got, I'm like, what the heck? We always have birds, you know? So I waited for a long time and I thought, you know what? I'm going in the house, uh, you know, forget it. And then I thought, no, for wildlife, you have to have patience. And, and this is something I do not have. <laughs> so I thought, you know, no, I'm going to sit out here for a little bit longer. And um, 
So I did. And then a little bit later, I woke up. I had fallen asleep. And, um, you know, that wasn't good. I, I'm like, you can't fall asleep in wildlife photography. <laughs> There's no napping. So I thought, you know, okay, you know, but then I, I went out after that several days, I got some good shots with it. I'm okay with it now. And, but I would like to work on that uh, maybe in the next, in the next year, you know, cause now that it's getting nicer outside, I can, I can go out. And, you can get um, out more. I mean, you, yeah, you've yeah. got some stunning shots. I'm looking at the, your, um, your hummingbird images uh, that you did oh, for, for like week 17 of your project. Yeah. They were, they are absolutely beautiful. I mean, if this is like your first incarn incarnation of uh, wildlife photography, I'd be so impressed to be able to take things like that myself. And, <laughs> you know, wildlife isn't, it's not say strong, a strong suit of mine. It's not really an, an, in, an area of interest of mine, really. I, I'm just like you said, I'm not, I've not got the patience to sit and, and right, you know, yeah. wait for the no. subject really you know I probably would fall asleep <laughs> quite similarly yeah. to you <laughs> but we'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be rubbish in doing this we really would but I must say what you've started off and getting already is really remarkable and again it's just a testament to how consistent you are that you know you know what you needed to get in terms of the right equipment you know that you know sometimes you know the kit is limiting a little bit for certain types of photography so you've gone out you've got the right kit and you've you've you know you've taken the course you've done your learning as well and it's really kind of proven in your images and it, it just shows that you know all the steps that we teach kind of as a photography community and um, they really are kind of the the most important things to follow as well if you get the understanding you've got the equipment then you know re you're really set up for success in that sense but I mean it's it's so easy to say that in hindsight I mean one question I, I love asking kind of on our interviews is what we call the time travel question so if you could kind of take yourself back you know however many years it had been that you started off in your photography is there like one little golden nugget of advice that you could have give your, you know, you, when you were younger, can kind of give your uh, your older self to make photography that a little bit easier for you or a little bit more kind of quicker in a way? Is there anything that you think you can depart, you know, a little bit of information to help people that are listening? Well, I remember when I first got my, my 7200, which is what I'm using now. And that's about the time I started eye photography and learning and really learning. Um, I was reading an article and it was written by a photographer and he had interviewed some uh, other photographers and asking them, you know, what would be your advice um, to new people? And I don't remember anything else about the whole article. I don't remember what anybody else said except for one person. And he said, and, and I guess for me, this was important. Maybe other people already do this, but um, they said, he said, read your camera manual. And I thought, what? You know, because I'm not a manual reader. I mean, you know, appliances, cars, whatever. <laughs> I never read the manual. I've never read a manual for any of my other, my other uh, cameras. And, you know, I just push buttons until something starts and, you know, that's it. I don't read stuff. And so when he said that, I thought, oh, maybe I should do that. You know? So I did read my manual and I was like, wow, there's information in here that you need to know, <laughs> you know, and it, it was really like an eye opener. And it seems ridiculous, because it's something you should do anyway. But I just never did. And so um, reading it, uh, you know, it's not camera manuals aren't made to be exciting, or, you know, they're, they're kind of dry reading, but they give you a lot of really good information. So I did get a book. Um, that was made specifically for my camera. And the author went through, you know, on the, on the back of your camera, when you're looking at all that, the menu, and there's zillions of different things on that menu. You have no idea what they are, what they do. And he went through each thing and um, said why you need it, what is it, you know, and even told you how to set your camera, you know, to get your, you know, cause you're new. So yeah. the best, the best thing, you can always change it later, whatever. But um, that was like the greatest thing I ever did because I never ever did that before for anything. And that's probably why I didn't know how to use any of my other cameras, <laughs> but knowing your gear is just super important. It's not just your camera, but you got to know your lens and any other thing, your flashes, whatever else you use, you know, that's just, it just gives you so much more to work with. And I think your photography just gets better after that, you know, and just knowing what you're using and what your, what your camera is capable of. 
Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know it was capable of doing all that stuff. You know, like wow, what? I know it's it's so surprising, and and I think if you apply it to, um, you know, I suppose other other jobs like a mechanic, you know, you you'd learn about how to use all your tools. Right. You know, why mm-hmm. why wouldn't you do it with a with a right. camera? I mean, there is there's an auto mode which almost kind of seems like a kind of a get out clause for a lot of right. people, and I understand it's it's an easier place to start. But yeah. you're so right that if you learn what's available in your camera, you you can take it onto a whole different level with your bracketing right. and HDR and yeah. multiple exposure, right. but understanding right. what exposure is and what looks good and when it's too dark, when it's too bright. Right. There is a million different things in there that that are, you know, will, will help you enhance. So it's it's lovely to hear that, yeah, you know, it, it may not seem the most exciting thing to do, no, but, but you're right. You can sometimes <laughs> get like other books that are done like by third parties that are a little bit more interesting right. to at least read or, yeah. or even get in on, um, onto like YouTube and such, and um, right. then maybe like a dedicated video for someone going right. through and saying this button does this, this button does that, and yeah. and as, as you know, it may seem a little bit boring, but I say it's so valuable, and it may only be right. half an hour or an hour of your time, but you come out and you know now how to use your kit, so right. you know you've got that knowledge and it stays yeah. with you. It's amazing. It's amazing what you can learn just reading that manual. <laughs> I never thought of that before, you know, I don't know why, but another thing I was thinking was, uh, and this was, this has been my issue is, um, you know, when you first start out, learn how to delete photos, learn how to categorize photos, because right now I have about 50,000 on my computer, plus hard drives and, you know, good luck going back and finding anything that you want to look for. And, you know, when you're new and you have a hundred pictures on your camera, you know, it's not such a big deal, but five years from now, when you have five or 10,000 on your camera or on your computer, um, you're not going to be able to find anything. And I, I really, really regret not starting earlier right now. It would take me a lifetime really (laughs) to go through, throw out stuff. I mean, there's so many things on there I need to delete and, it's just kind of a mess. And so I really, really wish that somebody at some time would have said, start now, you know, delete things you really don't want. Yeah. Find whatever categorizing it makes sense to you and just do it do it right from the very beginning yeah yeah you, you're so right and some people may not know that this is going to be a big hobby for them going down the line so yeah. you say they don't kind of do it properly but like yeah a, a folder structure a workflow in that sense you're right because yeah. I'm the same you know I've still got pictures and some images are, are relatively in the right folder but they could be split yeah. up and yeah you know it's but it's it's so easy just to dump them all and think I'll come back and do it another yeah, day and that's what I always think yeah, yeah. and then you don't do that <laughs> no yeah. I tend <laughs> to I upload my pictures I go right to the one that I want and I just ignore the rest it's yeah. like no I should be deleting the rest or something but I don't and they all just sit there on my computer forever <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone but it has been so nice talking to you Audrey to, to kind of get oh, get a kind of a good insight as to you know how your mind works creatively <laughs> and you know and then say you know what you're looking forward to doing but I mean as much as we've been kind of put we'll put some images up on screen throughout this this video but um for people that maybe just been listening to the podcast and they want to actually see a little bit more of your images do you have um like a website or anywhere that we can find you online um, I am on Instagram, Audrey's Images. Um, I have a Flickr account also that awesome. probably there's more stuff on there. Maybe I, sometimes I forget to upload to Instagram, but I, I've been trying to keep up with it, but sometimes <laughs> I forget, but uh, I do not have a website. I, I want to have a website, but I know how long it takes to do this. And so I've been sort of avoiding it, but I really want to do it. So at some point, yes, I will have a website. Because I really like making websites. I, I've made them for other things before, and I think they're fun to do. And um, I would like to do that. That's that might be another one of my yearly goals. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's it. You should, you know, yeah, be doing it for other people and other things. Make sure, yeah, you kind of service your 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 photography itself because it'd be lovely. I mean, we'll get all the just all the links off you, and uh, we'll put them in descriptions anyway for anybody that's listening or watching, so you can check out some more as well. But I just want to say on my behalf, thank you so much for coming on, Audrey, because it, it's been so fun talking and and I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of understanding that there are people out there that are as impatient as me <laughs> and sometimes a little bit scatty minded about kind of what you do with. 
file. Yeah. So it's nice to know that I'm not alone with things oh, like good. that as well. <laughs> but I'm, but hopefully maybe we could do this again and maybe kind of like in six months time, you can come back and say how you've got an amazing file structure of pictures. Oh, yeah. well, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> maybe 12 months then. I'm going to work towards it. <laughs> Bless well thank you so much for coming on and i i do hope we can do this again in the future anyway because it, it's been an absolute riot so thank you so much for coming along audrey all right well thank you very much